very peaceful. It is very peaceful. Uh, <clears throat> good evening. I don't want to say good morning. You do, but I think good evening is actually good. good evening is appropriate. The sun is setting. The sun is setting on Clan Ava, Camp Ava, however you want to term it. And so now we can kind of release details of where it is, what it is, and how it came to be. Yes. It's incredibly clickbaity to put like a thumbnail up that says like, we're being evicted. Or <laughs> it's all good news. Um, there's no tragedy, no. is there? There's no bad Just thing happening. Bittersweet ending. So, Clan Ava. So... We owe enormous thanks to a terrific amount of people and we're not going to get to name them all. And the problem I've said previously is with naming people, you forget someone. You forget someone, yeah, and then happens. And you, and you remember retrospectively, We should technically difficult. word it all down. But... No. <laughs> well, you can, but then you're just reading off a thing and you just... So, um, <sighs> Camp Ava, or Clan Ava, However you want to term or cult it. Cult Ava. If, <laughs> <laughs> if you're to follow the, the clan <laughs> colours. Um, long story short, uh, a good friend of mine, many years ago, decided uh, he was going to emigrate to France. Um, and he left this property behind. He wasn't intending to. He went on his Ollie Bobs and he was retired and he just decided not to come home. So this is 2018. And I got a phone call. It was a year where we had an enormous heat wave. Mm. And I got a phone call and he said, wow, we haven't visited the place in a little while. Mm, can you?" And he knows that I'm very nomadic by nature. So can you please look in on the place? And by looking on the place, he said, like, can you move in? I was like, mm. oh, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> if I, I must. If I must. <laughs> so I did. Did. And then the decision was to get it ready for sale. And we met in the meantime. We did. So and this is where he brought me in the middle of a night on a Sunday when I was half in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I'm going to get murdered. <laughs> but because I it's did a it. fairly <laughs> rural location, isn't it? It was. It went in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you didn't die. I did Great news. Die. <laughs> um, and so anyway, that was 2018. And we spent till the, come on, date rain, man. It was actually, I thought it was right before November 1st. But when I look back in our memories, it was about November 15th that we actually left. So November 15th, 2018. 2018. And you get the job of editing this and sticking mm -hmm. in loads of B-roll of the photographs of what it looked Ooh, like at that like, time. And what our first picture was ever together was right over there with the motorcycle. We yeah. were trying to sell a motorcycle for him <laughs> and a camper van. But with water, so... If I come to this back cupboard and open the back cupboard, I will find a few things. Here's the tank sits, it's a 100 litre tank, and it sits about here. There you are, that's how to fill it. So, I'll, this is a, so th that's the story up until then. So then we left. So we'd been here for however many months. You were here for six and I was here for four. Okay. So this is the last night at Frostfields. We've been packing and moving for three days, and this is it. We're leaving. We're coming back on Friday just to keep packing stuff and putting stuff in storage. So, it was fun while it lasted. A little cottage in England. And then we actually went to France to their house for Christmas to visit yeah. them because we weren't going to be here for Christmas. That's correct. Tenants were moving in. Originally, we got it ready for sale, and then it ended up being ready for rental and the people who were renting it uh, the tenants were moving in and we had to move out and then we'd really looked forward to a Christmas here because we thought we were going to be here for Christmas it didn't happen so they invited us over to the family home over in France and we had an absolute blast we did it was, it was fantastic actually so fast forward however many years and we got a phone call I'm going to say relatively recently, but it wasn't it was, it actually. It was actually around September of last year. Only, September of last year. Along the lines of mm, not well, renting it hasn't really worked. 
I, COVID's been a thing. I haven't been able to do landlords visits and despite the fact that there's a, a big price tag on renting the place, I've kind of slightly accidentally rented it to people who haven't necessarily taken as much care of the place as you had done previously. Would you like to come back and do it all over again? Yay! <laughs> um, this time was a little more work though. <laughs> yeah, it was grim when we yeah, got here. It was pretty bad. It's a really beautiful place and you'll be hopefully dropping in loads of B-roll all the time about the place. But anyway, when we arrived back here, it was too big a task for us to be able to complete on our own. I've still got work to do, you've got stuff to do, and there was an enormous amount of stuff to do here, and it's no mean undertaking anyway. And I said to my friend Steve, I said, I can I can resource this for you, I can get this stuff done, but you're just going to have to be a bit open to something that most people would be resistant to. And he's kind of like, okay, go on. And I said, the van life community will provide. There's people that we can rely on, and bear in mind, at this time, actually, none of the people that we had here, we really knew very well. No, just the Beechwoods. Just the Beechwoods, literally. And even then, I only met them personally a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we said to Steve, because um, it's community spirit within the van life community is famed. Um, anyone who owns a camper or been out in a camper irrespective of whether it's a motorhome or, a, or a, um, a homemade quirky or whatever it is, you all know, you start parking up next to each other somewhere like Mantor, everyone gets on like a house of place. So I said to him, we can resource this, I've got people that I can rely on to be able to get all this stuff done, but it's got to be a bit of a trade. So we've got people that we know that kind of want somewhere for the winter, um, to maybe on occasion have mains hook up, but more primarily to know they've got somewhere safe and secure to spend the winter months when, let's face it, it's a bit dreary, it's a bit drab, uh, and there's it, the opportunities for sitting outside and enjoying the wonderful countryside are, well, not readily available. No, so we sat inside instead. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so what was next? We'd we'd moved in. We moved in on Halloween. Oh, with well the remembered. Beach woods and Frank and Joe from Frankincense, which I had never even met. <laughs> and I was like, who are these people, and why are they here? <laughs> <laughs> and now they are family. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice of you, Jeff. Press your button. Turbo, sorry, quick. I am. <coughs> <coughs> Come in for years. I'm in 11th place, that's ridiculous. Press it again, press it again. That very definitely. So I didn't realise that's when we moved in, but anyway, so the Beechwoods were here immediately. We said we're, we're going to be moving to this place. Actually, the move in itself was heck of a story because uh, we weren't able to do that without a drama. It's always dramas. It was, uh, there was a storm, there was. Uh, absolutely apocalyptic weather. Not by can Canadian standards, yeah, no. by British standards. So I was gonna go see if he can help a man. There's a car that's stuck right here. We can't see it right now, but it can't get up the hill. So he's gonna go see if he can help push. Oh, man just fell down. Oh, here goes somebody else is gonna help. Oh, look at nice people. Excuse my puffing and panting, that was hard work. And we got a tremendous amount of help from uh, a variety of people who... I'm not um, going to start naming names now because I'll No, because you'd say Sprinter Phil and you'd say Jade and you'd say the Musgroves and you'd say Dickie Beechwood and then, you know, we'd, we'd end up... Uh, the first three did help in the winter though, that winter's icy day was, was Phil, Jade and... The Musgroves. They're the ones that came down to Castleton in the blizzard and fought that storm to bring us stuff. Oh, oh, because I'm missing a detail here, and that is, despite the fact that we own a socking great big van, uh, she'd been parked up uh, whilst we'd been doing work on it, and she hadn't got an MOT. She wasn't legal. 
No. So we couldn't use her, despite being a big old bus, we couldn't use her. To actually move. To actually move. <laughs> you know, which is was painful. So the beechwoods, for example, our solar panels and all that uh, and aluminum. Aluminum. That you say incorrectly, that all got transported here via the beechwoods. But anyway. So then and we it got all, the van towed. We got the van towed and that you've got video story. of that. Do I? Yeah, I have it of actually coming and driving and we all cheered. It's exciting. I'll put that in right here. <laughs> One step closer. <laughs> but so we'd already got people here and then there were a variety of tasks so we can drop in some b-roll of like dicky beechwood using this electric chainsaw which was infinitely more capable than anyone anticipated it would be mm. yeah he cut Taking that tree down, the down tree down there in front of the solar panels and then all the ones over there and he put a video up doing a review with oh, the thing have, yeah but um the premise was that if steve the owner visited he'd point at a van and go like who are they this never happened by the way but this was the, how we set it up Point at a van and say, who are they? And I could either say, that's a van that I'm doing work on and they are guests of ours. And whilst I'm doing work, they've got somewhere to stay and fill up water and uh, they can utilise Dave's fantastic Elsan. <laughs> or, uh, alternatively, they were lending a hand to the tune of a couple of hours labour per day helping get the place ship shape unless you were dave from Ten Thousand sunsets <laughs> in which he worked about 10 or 12 hours a day there's no stopping that kid no you just It'll... say relax and he's just like oh, okay what should i do next and starts pulling out the wheelbarrow yeah um bless him bless him <laughs> so over that period the winds are we are the sun is setting on camp Ava, literally it's nine o'clock at night on a sunday evening mm. and uh, the sun is literally setting, but also it's time for us to move on. We're yeah. going to sunny Lincolnshire. Not gonna cry. No, you're not gonna cry. It's gonna be fine. You've done more crying than than most people do in their lifetime as you've been saying goodbye to people. Um, um, that's why I said one video when the Beechwoods left. I am not prepared. I'm not ready for this van life when you have to say goodbye to everybody all the time. Blue. Our beaches are leaving us. Fine. <laughs> God, it's been months. <laughs> it's just too sad for me. I don't think I'm made out for cut out for van life. <laughs> you have to say goodbye too many times. Come on, I get. I get to push the button. <laughs> push the button. We love you! Can't give us a little more lonely. No, you're not saying goodbye. It's, what is it they say in the film? See I'll see you, you down, down the road, road or yeah. something along those lines. Um, but the winds are, the take home winds are that we are handing over this property to new owners who have purchased it in a much better condition than ever it was that we received it in. Yeah. It were a mess. I don't know whether we've got any photos or videos of how much of a mess it was. I don't know either, because it was, it was just so bad. I might have a few, like, just single shots of stuff laying around. It looked like a junkyard. It had been neglected for a very long time. No gardening had been done. Uh, nothing had been thrown away. Um, a business had been run from the premises doing uh, vehicle servicing. So there was 
all sorts of manner of industrial trash kicking around and it's it's a big place and if you're not on top of it nature takes over it was um, heartbreaking yeah it was sad to see it in that state and through the tremendous efforts of a great many people um who've worked incredibly hard in not ideal circumstances e.g through the winter when it's perishing cold and rainy and you look outside and you don't really feel like going out and getting all muddy and gritty and dirty uh, and it's physically tiring those people set to task with a plum um, really did get stuck in get involved and really helped out uh, helped out and kind of proved the point that we'd said because I'd said to Steve um, I've got these resources available without actually knowing the individuals at the time. I mean, we'd not met Dave and Giannette at that time, for example. No, but I did a gig for Kiki Phil, Phil Tomlinson in uh, Preston for New Year's Eve. And um, this nice couple named Dave and Jeanette were there. Giannette, as we like to call her. 10,000 Sunsets. 10,000 Sunsets, yeah. And he was actually doing all the photos. So there's photos of me singing on stage that night. And he was the one that took those. And he sent them to me, and that's how I started talking to them. And we had, I think it was Our Time Travels or Our Time Adventures coming for dinner on January 8th. Our Time Van Life. Our Time Van Life, neither one of those. <laughs> I knew it was our time. That was pretty good for me anyway. And, uh, and then I said to Dave and Jeanette, oh, do you guys want to come for a Sunday roast? Because we do amazing Sunday roasts here. Just saying. We did. Well, we'll do more someday. But, um, and they said, yeah, sure. And then, so they came over and they had dinner and I said, oh, where are you off to next? Cause they were full time. And they said, oh, we don't know. And I said, well, if you want to help out and paint, cause I had to paint every room in the house really, and, um, work on the property and stuff, you guys are welcome to stay. And they said, yes. And then they never left. <laughs> <laughs> like a great many other people. Yeah. Frank and Joe included. Frank oh, yeah. and Joe we've, were we've, huge helps doing our chassis, doing the motor, doing we the We said filling. we weren't going to name names, and then we've gone straight into naming names. But but uh, they were the big ones. Well, they? there were people who were here. So some people arrived and never left yeah. <laughs> and were tremendous help. Other people, like um, uh, Martin Fossil Metals, mm. would turn up. And he's such a knowledgeable bloke. Like, we got this big old pile of wood. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> I've been mowing grass. One more. That was two. And two. Oh, three. And two. Maybe I'll just cut this part out. Who knows? Oh, talk amongst yourselves. I'll be right back. <laughs> Should I stop it and start it again? Oh, no, you could do it in the edit. Earn you. Okay. You can earn you keep, can't you, love? <laughs> came from the boots that last one so martin fossil metals martin fossil metals i'd been trying to light this fire up at the back here really rather ex uh, unsuccessfully even despite having the terrific amount of accelerant and had no joy and he just kind of walked up to it and went oh yeah you're doing it all wrong what you want to do is this and then before we knew it we had an inferno on our hands yeah so uh, there was people like him who would like rock up kind of do a yoda moment and then disappear mm -hmm. off again and came to the rescue as well when like Dave and Shell were here and they were stranded because oh, they insist it. on buying Volkswagens and <laughs> no one knows why because they say oh the great cars and every single one that they've ever had at any point just you know leaks yeah. terrific amount of oil but anyway <laughs> Dave and Shell that's your problem we love you <laughs> um but he, he'd learn the hammer we're gonna name names we got Sharon <laughs> from Adventure Under the Stars who was my magic fairy dish elf every morning i'd come downstairs and my dishes were done and she and my kitchen was clean because she was my little fairy my little dish fairy <laughs> so we love her she's coming tomorrow for her birthday is she yeah oh exciting. happy birthday she has. so we're rambling here and i don't even care what the elapsed time of this video is i couldn't no. give a monkey well, it's really. 17 minutes right now we have stuff in between so i think we're okay so it was a success as far as Steve's concerned because everything that he needed to get done got done. And the household. Which and is the household, the which part. was the big success. <laughs> um, other successes have been that we have, we've made, so there's people who we've got enormously close to mm -hmm. um, that we didn't know previously. 
uh, and largely those people have become family. Mm -hmm. Oh, and speaking of family, I got to see my mom after two and a oh, half yeah, years. Oh, yeah, you did, yeah, because we had somewhere where we could put it. We had a bedroom for her that we still call mom's bedroom. And uh, she got to come down for a month right before Christmas and have her birthday. <laughs> Should we go upstairs and start singing it to her? Yeah. We have 30 seconds before mom's Called Wanderers did a really good video. They did that, two actually. really good videos on this yeah. place. I, I, I told them, I said, when you're coming for Easter, I need another one of those videos. And they did it. With the same sentiment. Yeah, it's really good. So, whilst having people here, we love to cook. Mm. Um, I hate cooking. <laughs> you love the result of <laughs> but cooking. But he loves cooking. I, I like. And then when he's too busy, I get stuck cooking his hand house. Okay, maybe <laughs> there's more truth to that. Maybe that's fair <laughs> to say. But I, but we, we like doing stuff centred around food. Um, you'll agree with that. So yeah. we've had people here and we've asked them, you know, we've not been running a, you know, um, some sort of slave camp here. We've, we've asked for help. People have got involved, mm. and as a result, maybe they've not had the worst surroundings or the worst food they've ever eaten, uh, you know, into the bargain. You can ask Frank about the dolphin nose potatoes for that one. <laughs> dolphin nose potatoes, yeah. Um, so some people were here for an incredible amount of time and became family. Uh, some people... They don't get any better, do they? <laughs> <laughs> What you should be able to do, you should be able to buy him from a comic, shouldn't you? So you should get Jimmy Carr Christmas mm, crap. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So dinner's ready, isn't it, Boo Bear? Yeah. Look at those. All these pieces of bread are lovely upside down. Cheers! Happy yeah. Valentine's Day! Yeah. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Cheers! Yeah. Here we go, barbecuing. People are coming up to get their food. We have pasta salads. The yep, there is. There's a meat in the middle. Oh, right. okay. Yep, there's a meat right there in the middle. Lift that tin foil, guys, and you got yourself some big old beef brisket. Are you ready? Ooh, there you go. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Veggie. Yeah, they're cute. Yeah. Logan got sucked into barbecuing. I'm only doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> of course you are. You're doing a great job there, Logan. Don't let anybody tell you different. Well, burnt offerings. It's all offering. At least we know they could have had Some people were here for a very short amount of time and became family. It wasn't like number of days served meant we held you in higher regard. Um, some people would come and go. Some people we'd see very little of. Some people were weekenders. Some time, people were full timers. If you know the van life scene, you'll know there's every different type of person. Um, and oh, what, biggest! I gotta say, Andy GoPro. I know we're not supposed to be naming names. But we have named a we've lot of people. Been rubbish at not naming names. <laughs> but anyway, carry on. But Andy GoPro has been a ginormous. I'd have to say one of the biggest helps that we've had here. He's become he's become like a brother to you. I think. Yeah. So I mean, he's fantastic. He he charged me with a number of jobs on his van. So I suppose. In the original instances, he kind of used to turn up and say hello and eat our food and then go back home again. And yeah. then more towards the end, if we hadn't had him, we'd have been mightily stuck. Because the, the thing that happened is the house sale happened. Um, 
happened uh, quick. It, it happened quick, but it happened once kind of the weather returned. So everybody wants to be off doing their adventures now, mm. completely understandably. And we'd also said the house is sold in the nicest possible way. What is it you say? Get it's, the heck out. No. no <laughs> uh, it's been swell, but the swelling's gone down. Yeah, so we can't have people hanging around. And we kind of stayed on longer than we thought we were going to. Um, so they're all gone and off on their travels. And Andy lives local. And, yeah, if it hadn't been for him, I'd have been up a creek without a paddle. Uh, and Easter wouldn't have had all that amazing meat that he smoked. Yeah. So a number of people have contributed in a fantastic number of ways. Should we say how Andy GoPro got his name? Or? Uh, you, you can do. Andy GoPro. He... Um, is, his name is Andy GoPro, and he even made an Instagram now, so go follow him, Andy GoPro. And uh, Mr. Boo over here, he did a video once where his phone kept falling down, and he said, if anybody has a GoPro, you know, that they want to give me, if you want me to do more videos like this, that would be great. And uh, Andy... I don't have GoPros. If somebody wants to buy me one, you know, so I can do this sort of thing for you, then... Action. More videos like this, that would be great. And uh, Andy, this man named Andrew, just wrote us on YouTube in the comments and said, I have one you can have. So he emailed us. A couple days later, he drove down to Castleton and to give us a GoPro and all this stuff because he bought it to go to Iceland a few years ago with his daughter and then just been in the drawer ever since. And we actually he was supposed to come down and, you know, see Poppy and give us a camera. And then we ended up talking him into staying the night like we always do because he has a camper. So he stayed the night and had breakfast with us. So from him just dropping off a camera, we kept him for about 24 hours in Castleton. And then he's just become family since and now he does all our meat mm. <laughs> <laughs> he does all our all our barbecue and smoked meat he does coming and he up will again our, in the future yeah for our electrical weekend coming up so we hosted the first electrical weekend here as a trial and that was a tremendous success Um, so we're having more of those, um, but I, so I wanted this video to be a couple of things. I wanted it to be a thank you for all of those that had lend a hand and it's dangerous as we've said, mentioning names because then you'll bloody miss someone. Um, so if you were involved, um, if you came here in any capacity, but certainly to kind of like pick up a shovel or a lump and piece of wood and chuck it on a fire or chop down a tree or what, whatever you did. We're incredibly grateful to you because we're now resting easy. We've just had a curry and we're going to watch Dune this evening uh, on the on the backs of your hard work. <laughs> Not quite that bad, no. but we're, well, I just want to say um, we're incredibly grateful. I also want um, people to understand uh, something that is really important to me. We had to do this kind of, not secretly, but we couldn't... Have, uh, we couldn't advertise the place as an open house, okay? However, those that we had here, we had an open door policy. So you didn't knock on the door to come in and use the shower or the kitchen or whatever. Most of the meals we had were a kind of communal thing. Mm -hmm. But then if someone was having work done on their van, they might need to use the, the cooking facilities, uh, certainly need to use their bathroom and shower facilities. And people just came and uh, 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 came and went. And when your mum first got here, she thought that were a mighty bit weird that we just got like Let all people these people walk around. <laughs> wandering in and out of the house. 
Uh, but then when it came for her to say goodbye, you've never met a more distraught woman. And um, no, she, she still misses it and wishes she was here. Very firmly didn't make any favourites when she was here, other than Dickie Beechwood, obviously. <laughs> um, but no, it, it was it was one of those where everyone that's visited, what's been fantastic, even like the Easter weekend that we had here, that were near Bedlam, we had like 22 vans. Mm. And it was so much work. <laughs> it, it was so much fun. It, was, it was so much fun. More balloons! Yeah, whichever. So here we go, we got egg trees. Egg trees. Get her bunting. <laughs> nice. <laughs> One, two, three, four. There it is, yes! <laughs> Daydream believer and a <laughs> queen. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Come here. He stole it. <laughs> All right, it is time for the Easter Bunny hunt. On your mark, get set, go find Bunny! We'll do a picture rabbit. We'll be giving out the prizes, the rabbit winners. So that was it. Shell found the last rabbit in the back of the field. So have all the eggs All, everything's been found. Time for prizes. Yay. Will you do me a small favor? I don't forget to grow up and live happily ever after. And stay as sweet as honey forever. But from my perspective, so the most drunk people here of the evening, for example, over the Easter weekend, was Rob Gray's fault. Because <laughs> Rob Gray gets me drunk. Mm -hmm. Whenever he turns up, he turns up with a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> He's a shit like that. Um, <laughs> it's, so it's all this. I would not probably have not been drunk had it not been for Rob Gray. But the most drunk people here were me and Rob Gray. Mm -hmm. Everyone's very respectful. Everyone's very caring. At no point have I, I had a tap on the shoulder saying that person's getting out of order. This person's just said this to this one. These two people have fallen out. Can you kindly go and ask that person to turn their music down? Or this person has had a fire and they shouldn't have done. Yeah, None they all of the hassle. sat around in a circle having a good time. And there's just been no drama. Yeah. At no point have I had to say, look, mate, you're going to have to leave because you, you're misbehaving. And we couldn't invite everyone. No, we couldn't invite everyone, but we did a, a job. <laughs> we well, did a good job there's, trying. <laughs> there's people who could have probably benefited from being off the roads during the winter period. But when you consider that we were also having viewings here, so we couldn't have anyone here who, for example, needed considerable repair work done to their van to get it back on the road because if a viewing was booked in, it'd be a mass exodus. Everyone would leave. We go from having five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten vans here to no vans. And then when the viewing was over, they could all come back again. Because you'd hope society had reached a point where you could say to people, oh, these people are great. You'll really like them. Um, they just live in vans. Um, but that can be a bit of a difficult sell. And when somebody's trying to sell a house, that's not necessarily... So that was not a stipulation by Steve, by the way. That was one that I imposed personally where I said you've got to be able to leave under your own steam at a moment's notice um, because, you, you you know, it's not our barbecue, it's a borrowed barbecue. So, um, so them's the rules and yeah, everyone we were, respected that. we were pretty that. picky though. 
I think. <laughs> so if you're invited, good on you. Well done. I'm just trying to very diplomatically explain there why why Not we everyone. didn't just have well, any we man and his dog. Twenty two vans was pretty much a limit. It should yeah. have stopped at twenty, but it was it had to you have to put a limit somewhere. Ask ask Debbie Beachwood. Remember they were doing a plan and they Throw Debbie Beachwood no, under no, the no. bus, why don't she you? She had a list of about like sixty people gonna come to this thing. And Rick was like, all right, we got to cut it down. And she was like, snip, 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 snap, cut down to like six people. And she's like, so I'm not as bad as she is. But I take... <laughs> you thrown her under the bus twice. Twice you thrown her under the bus. That's not fair. Uh, we've had I love you, Debbie. We've had some one day wonders. We've had some people here who have literally just been here for the day and gone. Uh, we've had people, everyone that I've done work for, it's ended up being part mm. of the fam and has yeah. ended up with a Sunday roast at some point. <laughs> yeah. All cooking for us. Yeah. Little Van Martin broke out the <gasps> salmon. That was amazing. Still not mentioning names. <sighs> Yvonne and Kev from Let's Go Somewhere. Let's, uh, Rosie goes. Rosie goes. Uh, and the list goes on. <laughs> um, oh, and Ruby Wego came. Yeah. Well, they used this as a pit stop. They did use it as a But it was stops. very, very nice to see them and we yeah. loved them tremendously. Um, we better stop now. Stop with the name. Paul's woman. Yellow Van. <laughs> it's not called Paul's Yellow Van. It's Paul's oh, yes, Van. Paul's Van. You call it Paul's Yellow It'll Van, but always it be. Well, he loves me, so it's okay. <sighs> you always cite him as being your favourite. He's my favourite. But you don't state favourite what? He's just. He's just my favourite. He's just a nice guy. Good luck, everybody else, because Paul Barker's her favourite in whatever <laughs> well, capacity. Besides you. Yeah, 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 whatever. You're my actual favourite. Mm, oh, yeah. Well, I, now we can differentiate. Anyway, <laughs> so hopefully there's a lot of B-roll of uh, some of the fun and games that we've had here, because we have had an absolute blast. Christmas was incredible uh, uh, for having yes. so many people. I, my only regret is that I wish we knew people in the van life community when we were here first time round. Oh, I definitely agree with that. Because we were here on a onesies, and and in a new relationship, that was, was great. Magical. But sharing it with people has been a great deal more fun. Um, and I feel better, because when you had to work, when I was here the first time, and you had to work nights, I was here all alone. Yeah. And I didn't like that. I no. cuddled up with Paddington Bear and hide out in the bedroom under the covers <laughs> but it's been a blast yeah. this We've time i had it. rick beachwood by the gates so. our sentry at the at the gates yeah. nothing gets past that boy i tell no, you i felt so much safer when the beachwoods were here to be yeah. fair and when he wasn't here it was kind of weird it was yeah it was kind of strange and we've had so many different personality types i mean there's there's, there's dry witted and then there's frank <laughs> <laughs> and if you've met Frank, well, you know Frank, you know what I mean. Even his stickers are happy, Frank. <laughs> and, and and there hasn't been competition for the limelight. There hasn't been, um, you know, it's just been fantastic. Everyone's literally every different type of personality from every background, and in some occasions, different countries. For example, with Bruce, he's who's, from Australia. He's from Australia. So, Bonds a ripper. Bonds a ripper. We should probably just set the. Oh, if Bruce, we've got time here. Geeky Phil. It's not Geeky Phil. Phil it's Tomlinson. Phil Tomlinson. It'll always be Geeky Phil to me. No, it's Phil Tomlinson. Anyway, just acknowledging Bruce for just a moment, we need mm. to set the record straight because I have a habit of giving people like either nicknames like Dickie Beachwood. People start to call him Dickie Beachwood or now. Giannette. Giannette. Um, and the same went with Bruce, and and I set a rumor a fly, which I now regret that he was Australian. And um, Bruce, of course, isn't Australian; he's from New Zealand. There you are. Right, that's that done. I'm that bombshell. <laughs> I used to. Do you remember a Lion King? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Brucey. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Happy 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jeanette. Happy birthday to you. And many more. She's like, it's so pretty, isn't it? It's all your colors. Like we're singing pastels yeah. and stuff. And then we can leave it up because they're Easter colors. Spread germs. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yay. Um, so Steve's thanked uh, is a big one. Cheers, mate. We, when I say we couldn't have done it without you, we literally couldn't. This is your property, and you allowed us to stay here and uh, trusted us enough thankfully to be able to invite a whole bunch of other people and some of which we didn't particularly know very well if at all when they arrived here and um because maybe they arrived here to have work done on the van aka camper van gaz who we didn't know have no knowledge of previously to dicky beechwood or gavin and Ch he's another one gavin gavin being called gavin, gavin but i called Shepherd. him gavin, gavin and shepherd Right, we're back. We've just been saying about Gavin and Shepherd, for example, turned up. I got no prior knowledge of them, and Dicky Beechwood uh, vouched for them. That was good enough for me. So Steve entrusted us with the place, and anyone who was here was kind of free to invite people. There's a great many people who we met. We met by proxy of other people, and they uh, took the whole business very seriously. Well, it stands as. An example of, if you know somebody who's in a similar situation, e.g. they're remote, they've got a house for sale and they need house sitters, as it were, and to get some stuff done, the van life community, particularly over the winter period where it serves those uh, individuals, uh, is a fantastic resource. Uh, we, uh, so we're incredibly grateful to you all and we miss you all terrifically. And... Um, there's going to be a montage of people saying goodbye. Yeah. So, Jeanette and Dave, did you ever think when we met on New Year's Eve that you would have been at Camp Ava since January 8th? No. No? <laughs> it's a place for a suntan. Yeah, came for Sunday lunch. Didn't Sun leave. <laughs> Sunday lunch, we got a suntan. Yeah. Very long Sunday lunch. Anyways, you're leaving us today and we're very sad. Once we get our tire fixed. <laughs> it was my plan. I slashed your tires so they had to stay longer. <gasps> no, I just did. <laughs> that was a good plan though. No, nobody ever leaves. <laughs> the one that we know and love. Yeah, yeah, thank you. No, it won't be long very long. <laughs> you can barely see Dave. <laughs> see you very soon. Yeah, it won't be long. <laughs> leaving Camp Ava forever. All right, Boo Bear. So our frankincense are leaving us. Mm -hmm. Say goodbye. Bye. Miss you. Love you. See you in a month. <laughs> Never really liked him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs>
Another one bites the dust. Da, 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 da. <laughs> is that the theme <laughs> tune you're going to be playing last? It is now. All these people I just decided. <laughs> and another one. Love you, bye. 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 Bye bye now. Love you, bye. Bye bye. Bye. Love you, bye. Bye bye. And we're yeah, we've just had the best time. It's been it's been hard work, but it's been brilliant. I think people like. Dave, for example, found, because he really did get more stuck in than he needed to, and I think that was a personal satisfaction thing. Um, and I saw some pictures of him when he first arrived and he'd lost weight over the course yeah, of the did. time being here, despite the fact we were trying to feed him up. And I think because <laughs> that was because he was doing quite a lot of stuff and he was really active and, and all the rest of it. So um, even those that worked hardest uh, hopefully got some satisfaction out of that and then we're on to we're on to pastures new aren't we yes sir we're going to sunny lincolnshire because i've got an overlander to build well not on my own uh thankfully um i'm doing the electrical and plumbing side of things and somebody else gets to build the blessed thing which is a great thing which is ideal because this thing is chuffing enormous um Poppy's legal. She's got an MOT. Mm -hmm. She didn't have the other day. Mm -mm. She had a failed MOT, but then she got an MOT because we made some minor repairs. And and thankfully it was only minor repairs. We got off really lucky, really. But we did a lot of work on her, to be fair. Yeah, we did. Um, and she's had not, a lot of new parts and whatnot. But anyway, she is what we will use to move in. So rather than dragging Poppy to Lincoln, um, we're going to drive her there full of our stuff. Um, a client said to me a little while ago, sorry, mum, my mum's watching this. Sorry, mum, mute it for a minute, that he could fall into a bucket of tits and he'd still come out sucking his own thumb. And... Um, uh, and the reason being he found out where we're going to be living and was just like how do you pull it off and I was like the universe provides whatever we need the universe always provides so I try not to get too stressed about it it's not always easy is it to not stress <laughs> about the future um, this overlander project has come along at the perfect time and it's the perfect project I want to do an overlander and with the client that is involved with this one and the build team uh, and thanks, uh, Paul Jackman, uh, off-grid nomad, for putting me on to the client and setting that up for me. <laughs> Name job. Yeah, well, no, <laughs> he, he was instrumental in yeah, getting yeah. me that job, so I can very directly use his name and say thank you very much. And that's going to be really exciting for us. And in the meantime, we've been able to get Poppy to a point where we can get her up there and complete the build on her. And we've got loads of things coming up. Um, and it's all incredibly jolly exciting, really. Yeah. So it's kind of slightly bittersweet at the moment because we've loved being here. Bittersweet, yeah. But it's time for a new challenge. This one's done. We've completed it. It's been swell, but the swelling's gone down. No, we've completed this one. It's <laughs> right did. now. We it's did. time it's for beautiful. the next one. So. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that, isn't it? Um. But then the last thank you, I suppose, has to go to Paul because we were sat with Dave and Gina. So Poppy's not ready to kip in. The place where we're building the Overlander is pretty remote. Uh, Andy GoPro very kindly has lent us like a tent awning thing that we could set up. So we were literally going from a million pound house to a tent. <laughs> and then Paul caught wind of this. He's oh, someone. <laughs> Uh, Paul's a gentleman where Dickie Beechwood did some work for him. Not all the van conversion, but some of it. And I'd done some electrical work. And he caught wind of the fact that we were going to be staying in a tent. And he just said, ah, oh, you should just borrow my van then. So we are. It's over there. Um, Show ready. Dun, dun, dun. That is our home for a couple of weeks right there. So it's a Mark 8 Transit. And it's going to be a very comfortable place to be. 
whilst we get to the point where we can overnight in Poppy. We've got facilities while we're there. And then we're into the summer months and we're into the lighter evenings and I've got a job to do in the day, but I don't mind cracking on in the evening. And then we can hand pull his van back and we'll be ready in Poppy. And again, the universe has provided for which we have to be incredibly grateful. And we were actually sat around dinner when I took a phone call. It was a Sunday and I actually had a, quite a lot of wine at the time. Yeah. And so I didn't cover all the details. I just said, I'm incredibly grateful. I'll speak to you more about it tomorrow. And Jeanette was like, why, why is it with you guys? What, what is the thing? Is it, is it, is it, is it, what, what, what? I don't get it, but we got this magical we're phone call. We're just lucky. We're just lucky, I guess. We're just lucky, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's, so the, so our channel is going to start to have more content in the respect that we're aiming for a single video a week on the Overlander. Mm -hmm. which I'm using some outrageous toys on and everything is huge and fantastic. Uh, and then uh, Poppy, which we've done various videos on and I can't quite believe it's two years <laughs> to get her to this stage. But anyway, she's got an MOT, she's got a back door. She has a back door, a beautiful yeah, back a door. A locking back door mm. for the first time in a long time. And uh, we can really get stuck in. So hopefully a video a week on how that's going. Yeah. And there's some other stuff, but I'm not sure whether we can announce that yet. So we'll keep our powder dry on that one. And if there is, we'll just do a completely separate announcement on it. Ooh, but for now, over. full circle on frost fields. Yeah. Yeah. It's been amazing. Yeah. And I almost tried. I almost cried a few times, but I held it back. Good. Inhaled it back. I inhaled it. <laughs> Get back. <laughs> um, so if you've been involved in any capacity whatsoever, thanks for being part of it. If you bought clan colours, um, so that we. Oh, should we say how we got the clan colours? Oh. Because we haven't actually told people. Like people go, why are you black and red? Why are we black and red? Because I have a thing for lumberjacks. Oh yeah. <laughs> when we were here the first time, right here on this circle chair thing. He was cutting some wood. I'm looking at myself, so I'm. He was cutting some wood, and I found it very attractive. <laughs> and I was like, "Hmm, lumberjack." So I bought him black and red in the past, and then I bought Ricky Beechwood one, a black and red one for Christmas, and then it just kind of became a thing. And now it's our but clan color. It's, so <laughs> it's not specific to me, by the way. She's quite happy to stand at the window ogling Dicky Beechwood chopping wood in his plaid colours. <laughs> it was not a it was it was a, a uni man in man in plaid chopping wood. And I love though that everybody just kinda like took to it as these are clan colours now and really it was just because I fancied some lumberjack. <laughs> <laughs> so just because you're a pervert means now everyone's going around with the silly clothes on. But anyway. They're not silly though. Freak the they neighbors are, out. They are the clan colours now. They are clan Ava. And hopefully it lives on. So clan Ava was here and uh, This was Camp Ava. But Clan Ava will is, always be. Yes. But what I'm saying is I hope that there is a subsequent Camp Ava. Our later date, we want to do some travelling and whatnot. But I think there'll be another one at a later date. Oh. And if you don't get a vibe for that one, it means you really are a pillock. <laughs> <laughs> right. Should we wrap it up? Yeah. By the way, we've got lawn behind us and then inexplicably this carpet no one would know it was carpet well they do because i've just highlighted which pixie's cut into shape to put in paul's van I but am. i just thought i'd highlight the fact that there's carpet on the grass i couldn't cut there. it with the scissors i need to find the exacto knife but i think it's in poppy somewhere so that's oh, kind of wounded yeah <laughs> right wrap it up then all right everybody thank you so much um, for being a part of our clan in our magical house of Frostfields. And I'm sad, but I am ready to move on. I have come to, I have finally you got closure. Got closure. Yeah, because the first time we left, I didn't. And I never thought we'd be back. And then be able to come back was huge. And yeah, so thank you, Steve, for a. Uh, 
giving us an opportunity to come back to this magical place. The new people are very nice, so I'm excited that they're getting it. And that's it. So, all right, so here we are, the last day of Frostfields. We have Sharon from Adventures Under the Stars has a bunch of our stuff. We have Paul's van that we are going to be using for the next two weeks, and it is full. And uh, the movers for the new people are already almost on their first truck. They have three. We are just waiting for them to finish their first truck, and then we are heading off to Lincoln. I'm impressed Jeff over there. He is still working away getting stuff into a big bonfire and whatnot because there's no rest for the wicked. So Frostfield is almost over. And that is it. I'm impressed Jeff is there. He's still doing some work on the property for the new owners. And Sharon and I are leaving. But this is it. It's my last walk away from Frostfield. Full-time fan life, here we come. Hmm. Before I get too emotional, cheerio, bye-bye. Cheerio, bye-bye, that's Yeah, I mine. stole that from you, yeah, it's good though, right? That's my thing that I do. Love you, bye. <laughs> I'm not doing that though. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Pixie who through the magic of Instagram met her prince unimpressed Jeffy and they fell in love and they got themselves poppy a big red old jalopy Pixie's lots of fun and Jeffy's not that dumb if you like build shows come along and see how it goes come and join the venture of always fan adventure